I've used the word assembly in several videos, and for the most part, if you think of an assembly as a DLL or an EXE file, then then you're generally correct. That's pretty safe. However, an assembly is a little bit more involved than that, and that's the purpose of this playlist. When you talk to people and they say, oh, I'm a C-sharp.net programmer, what exactly does that mean? You're a C-sharp dot net programmer. I bet most of the people you ask, you say, what does it mean to be a dot net programmer? They would not be able to explain it. They'd just be, well, it's a, uh, I'm, I'm C sharp dot net programmer. And, uh, well, what other type of C sharp programmers are there? Okay, anyway, that's what we're going to explore in these next videos. I have here a main class dot cs file, and I want to show you that I've saved it into this me C sharp code. Let me list the contents of the directory here. You see main class dot cs, and I could type. Let's type type main class dot cs, and type is a DOS command. Just says show me the contents of what's in there. You can see main class static void main. Same thing we have over here. Let me clear the screen. Uh, what I want to do in this example, let me just show you. I want to I want to make some DLLs, okay? I'm going to call them assemblies, but but the the DLLs, if all that's all you care about. I want to make one out of C sharp. I want to use some C sharp code to generate one. I want to use Visual Basic to generate another DLL, and then I want to actually write some hardcore, slightly lower level Microsoft intermediate language. We, I refer to this language a lot in several other videos, but it's the language of .NET. In fact, let me just draw another diagram over here. We do a lot of C sharp programming. We run the C sharp compiler on our code, and that generates intermediate language. It's Microsoft, Microsoft intermediate language. And then when we actually run our code, it gets translated to native instructions on the CPU, in my case, uh, an Intel processor. And that's what the just-in-time compiler does, just-in-time compiler. We, we like writing C-sharp because C-sharp compiler does a lot of work for us, but that doesn't stop us from writing IL. When we write IL and we assemble IL, then that's just as .NET as any of these languages. In fact, it's more .NET because it's skipping all the extra compilers. Anyway, we're going to make .NET DLLs from using all these languages. And then what we're going to do is make an EXE, an EXE, and I'm going to use C Sharp for that, but I'm going to use any language for that, that references all these and ties them all together and, and does some magic. So that's what we're going to do. Let's do the C Sharp one first. First of all, I'm going to delete all this and drop the using system back in. I guess I could have just left that in there. And this is a simple Hello World example, so all of those DLLs are just going to do some simple hello world. Let me say public class me C sharp class public static void me C sharp method console right line hello from C sharp. Alright, save that. Let's go back over here. I'm gonna type main class dot cs. I hit tab for auto completion there. And you can see that the contents have certainly changed, because that's what we changed them to. Now I'm going to do my compiling on the command prompt here. I could certainly come over to to the project over here and right-click here and say properties. Or maybe there's properties there. Yep, properties there as well. And I could come here and say, hey, don't make me a console application. Make me a class library. But all that when we change this, all that does is change what Visual Studio does for us right here on the command prompt. So instead of having Visual Studio do all of its pixie dust magic. We're just going to do it by hand. One, I think it really engages us with what's going on. Uh, gets us gets that Visual Studio tool out of the way. And I, I don't mind changing things over here as long as I understand what they're doing over here. So we're going to do it all over here the, uh, not the hard way, I hate to say the hard way, a different way. Okay. We need to compile this C sharp file. Let me list the contents of the directory again. Notice the C sharp file is the only file in this directory. Okay, or a folder if you're used to window, using Windows Explorer and clicking around. It's same concept here. C sharp compiler. I want slash target. In fact, I could even spell this out if I want to. Slash target, a library, uh, and then slash out. I'm going to call this me C sharp assembly dot dll. We could call it anything we want to, but uh, C sharp assembly dot dll. We'll, we'll roll with that, and then. 
Uh, the input file is main class.cs. Again, I'm hitting the tab key for auto completion there. Let's hit enter. C sharp compiler grinds, doesn't really tell us much. Let's clear the screen, list the contents of the directory again. You can see that we have created this me C sharp assembly from this C sharp file. Very good. Very good. Now it's time to do the Visual Basic one. So, a quick trick I'm going to do is say Notepad, and we'll call it me vb dot vb. We could suffix it with anything we want to out here, but vb is good for uh, Visual Basic, obviously. Hit enter. Notepad pops up, says, I can't find uh, me vb, uh, vb. Do you want me to create the file? Yeah, let's create it. And it opened it down here. I'm not sure why. Bring that up here. And, uh, I am going to write the fastest Visual Basic you will ever see. Pop! Right? And uh, you can see, I, I don't know Visual Basic. <laughs> I've, I've never programmed in it. I just went and Googled how to do this. But we can see we have this public class, VB class, and shared. I do think Visual Basic got shared right. Instead of saying static, we say shared. And static, there's a video I have where I rant and rave about static and how it came from C++, and it really means compile time and all this kind of thing. I'm not going to rant about that here, but I do think shared is a better word. Shared means share this method among all instances of this class, right? Whereas static, it's like static. When you hear static, you think static electricity. So anyway, you can see that rant and rave about static versus shared in, in that video. Anyway, shared, me, VB method, console right line, hello from Visual Basic. N sub, we're not using curly braces anymore. We just say N sub. N class, let me save this. Control S, come over here just to prove that that worked. Me, VB or me vb dot vb and there you go there is our visual basic okay to compile this it's just like the c sharp one visual basic compiler forward slash target library library and the output file i want you to call me vb assembly dot dll to be consistent with me c sharp assembly and the input file will be me vb dot vb hit enter the visual basic compiler grinds for a minute and then let's uh clear the screen list the contents of the directory again you can see we now have me vb assembly dot dll so the c sharp one the visual basic one now it's time to create the intermediate the microsoft intermediate language one so we'll do the same trick we did before notepad me il dot il hit enter there's no you want me to create it? Yes! Please create it. Please open it up here. Again, I'm going to type the fastest IL you've ever seen. Control V. <laughs> I just pasted it in. I actually do know IL. I had to write a compiler to the intermediate language well, back in the day. <clears throat> all right, but anyway, we're going to get into all, what all this means, but I'm going to essentially just tell you a little bit straight up. This is the name of our assembly, me IL assembly. And we're referencing the MS Core Lib, MS Core Library, the biggest, fattest, most important assembly in the .NET Framework class libraries, class uh, built-in stuff. And then here we go. We have another class. It's public. MIL class extends object. We have a method in here. I call it MIL method. Doesn't return anything, and it's managed like most .NET methods are. Load a string. Howdy from IL onto the stack. Call console write line, and then return. All right, I'm going to save that. Control S. Get that off the screen. Let's list the contents of the directory again. We have meil.il. So type meil.il. You can see there is our IL code now. And now all we need to do is turn that IL into a DLL file, but the command is slightly different from the Visual Basic and C Sharp compilers. We're going to say IL assemble forward slash DLL. That's how we say target as a library and then slash out me il dot me il assembly dot dll just to be consistent with all these other dll's and then i'm actually going to uppercase this l because i forgot in the il code i had a uppercase there so there we go so it'll have some DLL out, me, IL assembly dot DLL, and then here's the input file, me, IL dot IL. Hit enter. Looks like we assembled just fine. Uh, clear the screen, list the contents of the directory again, and here we have me, IL assembly 
dot dll there. In fact, I'm going to clear the screen again. Let me list the contents of the directory, but I want all the dot dll files. So that was wildcard asterisk means anything over here. Let's match that with the suffix dot dll. And you can see there are our three dlls. Now, just for a reference reminder, we have made this dll out of C sharp. We made this one out of VB. VB. We made this one out of IL. They all say hello world. Nothing real special there. And now I want to tie them all together using one program. I could use any language for it, but I'm going to do C sharp again. I want to basically call all of those methods inside those DLLs from C sharp. So let's go over here. Control A, SVM, hit tab. You get static void main up there. And then it's really, really simple from here. It's just me C sharp class, me C sharp method, me IL class dot me IL method, me VB class dot me VB method. Now you'll see I'm not getting any IntelliSense support because I did not add a reference to any of those DLLs over here. I could certainly say add reference and browse to those DLLs. But again, I'm not using Visual Studio to do my pixie dust here. We're doing it all by hand. Let me bring up the command prompt again. Clear the screen. C sharp compiler slash reference me il assembly. Oops. Me il assembly dot DLL slash here. I'll just prove I can type out reference. I don't have to do it. Slash R, I can do it the long way. Me, VB, assembly, dot DLL. And then let's go shorthand again. Me, C sharp, assembly, dot DLL. And then the input file will just be main class again. Main class, dot CS, hit enter. C sharp compiler grinds and is satisfied that all is well. List the contents of the directory again. You can see we have main class, dot EXE. Let's run it. Main class dot exe. Hit enter. Hello from C sharp. Hello or howdy from IL and hello from Visual Basic. So there you go. We have just generated several .NET level DLLs from various different languages. Key point from the video: .NET doesn't know nor care what language generated those uh, .NET DLLs. Okay, if I, in fact, let's let's do this. Let's say il uh, ildasm is il disassemble. Oh, let's pick one. Let's do the vb one. Uh, slash out mu dot text me vb. Whoops, me vb assembly dot dll. Hit enter. It generates a mu dot text. I can now type mu dot text. Notepad opens up down here, and you can see. Here is the Microsoft Intermediate Language generated from the Visual Basic compiler. Uh, if we look around in here, whew, wow, Visual Basic is verbose. I've never actually looked at one of these in a Visual Basic. Wow, that is just, yeah, okay. A little bit too much Visual Basic. Thank you very much. Anyway, somewhere in here, control home to get to the top of the file. Control F, I'm going to say me, VB. Uh, there's the assembly, there's the... There's the class right there. There's a class. Class, me, VB, class. All right. Now, Microsoft doesn't care where this came from. It doesn't care what compiler created this. It just works off the IL. And you, you saw that we were able to generate IL by hand ourselves. So it doesn't care. As long as it has the assemblies and it can execute them just fine, then we're good to go. Anyway, moving on, we're going to explore these assemblies in more deeper, darker detail and see if we can figure out exactly what they are.